the sweet peas, chef. Welcome back. If you follow me on Instagram, which you totally should, I shared a pineapple sorbet recipe the other day and everyone just went straight up crazy town for it. They were like, yes, please do this. That was because I had originally shared a raspberry sorbet and a mango sorbet and everybody was like, can you share a pineapple sorbet? And I was like, pineapple? Yes, I love pineapple, let's totally do this. So I made the pineapple sorbet and alas, everybody loved it and they were asking me to make a video for it. So that is why I have this video here for you today. All right, so I'm warning you now, this is a super easy recipe. It's two ingredients, very, very simple to make. When we get to the end of the video and you're like, wow, Lacey, that was super easy. I told you so, I'm telling you now. All right, we good? Awesome, let's get started. All right, so let's start from the beginning. What the heck is sorbet? Well, sorbet is usually the stuff that looks nice and fruity when you go to an ice cream parlor. They're off to the left, they usually have like a bunch of bright flavors because they're usually made with fruit juice. So the way you make them is you combine fruit juice with some sugar and some water. And it's kind of like an ice cream, but there's no milk. The problem with sorbets, especially if you're getting them at that ice cream place, is that they are loaded in sugar and people get them thinking that they're being healthy when they're actually not because they have so much added sugar and it's not necessary. So instead of making our sorbet using fruit juice, I'm gonna be using our whole pineapple, minus the skin because you. With a whole fruit, you actually get all that extra fiber and you get those added nutrients and you get all the sweetness and all the goodness from your whole fruit. That means the sweeter your pineapple, the sweeter your sorbet. So make sure that you know how to pick out a pineapple. How do you pick out a pineapple? I am so glad you asked. Let me go over how to do that. So you wanna look for a pineapple that looks heavy for its size. When you pick it up, it should feel kinda of heavy. You also want to squeeze it a little bit and if it has kind of a give to it, that means it's ripe and ready to go. Another trick that I use is I pull out some of the leaves on the top of the pineapple. It kind of looks weird when you're in the store because it looks like you're mutilating <laughs> the produce, but if you pull it out and it easily comes out, that means it's ripe as well. If it, you have to like get a jackhammer to get it out, it is not ripe. Also keep in mind that pineapples do not ripen once you bring them home. So if you feel like, oh, I'll get this and it'll ripen on the counter, it won't. So instead, pick out the sweetest, ripest pineapple you can while you're at the grocery store. For this recipe, we're wanting to get about four and a half cups of diced fresh pineapple. So that is roughly equivalent to one medium large sized pineapple. To cut the pineapple, we're gonna go ahead and lay it flat on its side, and then we're going to slice off the top and the bottom. This is gonna make an even flat layer that we can then stand it on up, and then we're gonna go around the outer edges and we're gonna slice down and remove the outer peel along the entire exterior of our pineapple. You might notice that a few pieces get left in there. Those are called the eyes. I know, super creepy, but they're called the eyes and we're gonna remove those after we get the whole thing done. So don't worry about those. Then slice the pineapple in half lengthwise and then lay it down flat. With all of these steps, you're gonna wanna lay it down on the flat surface because that's gonna make it less wobbly when you're cutting, which means you're less likely to cut yourself. Cut those chunks in half, so now you have four quarters. And then you're gonna lay each quarter on its side and you're gonna slice out the center part of it. That is the harder core of your pineapple that typically is not gonna be very sweet or tasty or soft. So remove those pieces on the rest of it. Then we're gonna slice it a few more times lengthwise to get it nice and evenly sized. And then we're gonna dice everything into our pineapple chunks. Try to keep the pieces as roughly similar as you can. I know it's not gonna be perfect, but the more evenly sized the pineapple chunks, the more evenly frozen they'll be and it won't get all messed up in the food processor later. It's just gonna make your life easier later. Did you know that it takes a pineapple three years to come to complete maturation in order to be able to be harvested? That is crazy when you think about your pineapples. So let's treat these pineapples well, people. So now that we have our pineapple chunks all ready to go, we are gonna need to freeze them because we need to have frozen pineapples. So place them on a baking sheet that is rimmed, that has been lined with parchment paper. Try to keep them not touching. It doesn't have to be perfectly organized, but as long as they're just not touching, that'll make it so they won't have to be broken apart later when you are putting them into the food processor. Can you buy pre-frozen pineapple from the store and just use it and skip this entire step? Absolutely, but you won't be able to pick out the ripest pineapple and make sure that you have really sweet pineapple. Can you buy pre-packaged, already cut up pineapple chunks from the store? Absolutely, but 
Again, you won't know if it's sweet because you haven't picked it out yourself. And those are super expensive. They're way more expensive to have somebody else cut them for you than to just cut a pineapple yourself. And now you know how. Okay, poof, now we have frozen pineapple. Look at that, how easy was that? We're gonna wanna let our frozen pineapple set at room temperature for a little bit. You'll notice that it'll start to get a little bit mushy and it'll start to sweat a little bit. That is what we want because if it's rock solid from the freezer, it's gonna be really difficult and take a while to blend. Go ahead and add the frozen pineapple into the food processor. Then we're gonna put on the lid and we're gonna pulse this for like 10 to 15 times. We're looking for the pineapple to get broken into chunks, kind of start to get broken down. If you waited for those 10 minutes or so and you let your pineapple kind of get mushy a little bit, this is gonna be way easier here, trust me. If you need to help it along a little bit, you can always add a little bit of warm water to kind of help break it up a little. Then we're gonna add in our freshly squeezed lime juice. You won't taste the lime a whole bunch on this, but it is gonna kind of make the pineapple pop. If you don't wanna add the lime, you don't have to add the lime. Now just put the lid on and continue to process this for a few more minutes. It's gonna take a little bit of time. You have to be kind of patient. You'll see it'll start to turn into what looks like Dole Whip, which will be really exciting. And you'll kind of start to see, you might need to scrape down the sides a little bit with a spatula. Just kind of let it be and let it just keep moving and it's gonna turn into a glorious pineapple sorbet. The texture we're looking for is gonna be kind of like a soft serve texture. And you can test it by just scooping it out with a spoon and testing to see how it is. You can also, at that time, see if it's sweet enough for you. If you picked out a really fresh, ripe pineapple, or if they were available even, then it's gonna be nice and sweet already. If it's not quite sweet and you really want a little bit of added sweetness, you could add in a little bit of raw honey or some pure maple syrup if you're vegan, and that'll kind of process it again, and then that'll make it a little bit sweeter. I know I said it's only two ingredients and that would make it three ingredients, but you know, sometimes we need a little bit of sweeter sorbet. If you're mixing it all together and you find that it just becomes a little bit too slushy and not a soft serve kind of texture, just pop it back in the freezer for a little bit and then reprocess. It's no big deal. It's just gonna postpone your inevitable eating of your delicious pineapple sorbet. So you can eat this right out of the food processor. I have done that many times. Or you can put it into the freezer and store it for up to two to three weeks just by itself in an airtight container topped with a little bit of uh, plastic wrap if you want or if you just have some sort of special you know, ice cream container gadget, that'd be awesome too. Whatever you wanna store it in, in the freezer, just make sure it's airtight. When you're ready to eat your frozen sorbet, just remove it from the freezer and allow it to set at room temperature for about 10 to 15 minutes. You want it to kind of soften up and then you can kind of mix it together and then it becomes that soft serve texture again. If you try to have it when it's all frozen, it's gonna be like not really soft. See, super easy. I told you in the beginning that it was gonna be incredibly easy. It's two ingredients, maybe three if you need a little bit of added sweetness. It's like Dole Whip, people. It's two ingredient Dole Whip. It's clean eating, sugar free, refined, everything free. It's so, so tasty. And I really hope you're gonna love it. P.S. A serving of this, which is about a half a cup, is only 47 calories, people. So, you know, awesome. Thanks so much for watching this video and hanging out with me today. For more frozen sweet treats, check out my playlist that I've highlighted for you. Make sure to subscribe and to give this video a thumbs up and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.